the talented engineer John Fritz proved himself an instrumental part in the steel revolution that occurred between 1867 and 1900. In 1860, just under 12,000 tons of steel was produced in the U.S., but by 1900, the skyrocketed to over 10 million. Fritz worked in the epicenter of this revolution, where the mills in Pennsylvania accounted for over half of this production. He was born in Chester County, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia, and grew up on his family's farm. He then became an apprentice at a local blacksmith, gained experience at several furnaces and forges, until he began work in 1853 for the Cambria Iron Company in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, one of the largest iron producers in the country at that time. In 1857, he designed the Three High Rolling Mill, which increased productivity by 30%. By 1865, one-third of the mills in America used the innovation, but by 1880, Fritz's Three High Mill was the industry standard. In 1860, he became General Superintendent and Chief Engineer of the Bethle Bethlehem Iron Works in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which would, in the 20th century, buy Cambria Iron's former steel mills in Johnstown. With the understanding of the pneumatic steel process through the efforts of Henry Bessemer, William Kelly, Robert Mushet, and Goran Granson, steel could now be mass-produced. The cost of steel rails, for instance, plummeted from $166 a ton in 1867 to just $27 a ton in 1901. The early process and experimentation could be extremely dangerous, however, including explosions. But Fritz and his fellow engineers from different mills, including Alexander Hawley, William Jones, Robert W. Hunt, and his brother George Fritz, worked together to, to design efficient mills and perfect the process. The innovations rapidly followed. The steel titan Andrew Carnegie, for instance, after having built a brand new mill, learned that he could make up to 50 cents more per ton if it had been designed differently. He immediately ordered it torn down and rebuilt. The design of the simple open hearth furnace took longer to make steel, but it produced higher quality steel, mainly because it was not dependent on low phosphorus iron ore, which the early Bessemer process required. Fritz compared the simple scientific and slow process of making open hearth steel with the interesting, exciting, and complex discoveries of the Bessemer process, but he attributed the open hearth process with the rank as the greatest metallurgical discovery of the age. Fritz was also looking for improvements, he was always looking for improvements and new opportunities in the steelmaking process and industry. His brother George at Cambria Iron invented the blooming mill, which could reduce large steel squares into smaller sections so that they could be rolled into rails. Competing with his brother, John then perfected a simpler design. Some of the directors of Bethlehem Iron said that he was never satisfied and could not let well enough alone. Once, a railway man said that he wanted steel with 4 by 6 inch angles, but he had to import them from England because no mill in America could manufacture them. Fritz replied that he could make them in two weeks, whereas it would take four weeks to ship them across the Atlantic, and he was good with his word. With a keen eye for the future, he persuaded the Bethlehem Iron Directors to make armor plating for the military, particularly for the American Navy, which was small at that time and was dependent upon imported Krupp steel from Germany. The company manager told him that he would hold him personally responsible if the venture failed to produce a profit. But Fritz persisted, gladly accepted the responsibility, and even offered to invest his own money. Whereas a ton of steel rail sold for $40 a ton, steel for shipping sold for over $400 a ton, hence benefiting the company financially. In America, the standard hammer size was only 12 tons, but in order to make steel plating, a much larger hammer was required. So Fritz went to Europe to observe the operation of a 100-ton hammer in France. When he secured the patent rights, Fritz returned to America, designed, designed and had built a 125-ton hammer. Though in Europe the trend was to use compound steel with a harder outer plate made of steel and a softer iron plate on the inside, Fritz determined to construct a plate of solid steel. When the army tested the European plate and his solid steel plate, the compound steel was knocked to smithereens and his steel plate cracked but kept the shot from going through. He immediately began work on a steel plate that would keep the shot out and prevent the cracking. The vast territory of the Midwest provided the demand for steel, including the expansion of railroads, the fencing in of grazing land with barbed wire, the growth of cities, and bridges to connect the railroads and cities. Steel also proved necessary for a variety of machines, a modern military, and anything else previously made with iron. Fritz, his fellow engineers, the steel titans, and the steel workers continued to supply the demand. 
The foresight of Fritz, though, prompted him to build the Bessemer mill and begin the production of armor plating before such demand was manifest to others. He retired in 1892 at the age of 70. Before his death in 1913, he served as president of the American Institute of Mining Engineers and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. At Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, he designed, donated funding, and built the engineering lab. The John Fritz Medal was also created in 1903 by the American Association of Engineering Societies for notable scientific and industrial achievement, with Fritz being its first recipient. Other recipients later included Thomas Edison, George Westinghouse, Alexander Graham Bell, Guglielmo Marconi, Alfred Noble, and Orville Wright.